Welcome to the second episode of the Vulkan Lecture Series. My name is Johannes Unterguckenberger from the Research Unit of Computer Graphics at TU Wien and the topic for this episode is the swap chain. A swap chain provides a collection of images which we can use in our rendering application to draw into and as soon as we are done with drawing we can hand it back to the swap chain with the instruction that the images shall be presented most commonly on the monitor attached to your PC. The right part on the slide represents the monitor where images shall be presented. In the middle we have a swap chain which manages all the images, each of which is either currently presented, provided to an application, or just idling until it is requested by the application, such images are available. And the left part represents an application that uses such a swap chain. So in our application we start by acquiring the next available image from the swap chain. The swap chain provides the next available image to our application. And our application starts drawing into the image which was provided by the swap chain. After our nice small scene has been completely rendered into the image, we hand it back to the swap chain. With the instruction that the swap chain shall present the image, so the important aspect here is that it still is the same image that we have gotten from the swap chain. We have reserved it in our application for some time, so to say, and now we are done rendering into it and we hand the very same but still swap chain managed image back to the swap chain. The swap chain has received the instruction to present that image and now it will start to transfer the image to the computer monitor. This typically happens in an ordered way, namely vertically. This pattern is also reflected in the technical data of monitors, which usually state a much faster horizontal update frequency, usually in the range of kilohertz, than for the vertical update frequency, typically in the range of hertz. So the most common vertical update frequency is probably still 60 Hz, but a single row is horizontally updated much faster at the speed of some kilohertz. This information shall just emphasize the procedure of transferring an image to be presented to a monitor, which happens in vertical order. After presenting the image has completed, that image moves back into the bucket of available Im images in our swap chain. The application requests another image from the swap chain to render the next frame. In this example, the swap chain provided image 2. And the application performs its draw calls to render the next frame into image 2. After everything is done, image 2 is handed back to the swap chain for presentation. Before I start the animation, now please keep the following in mind. What we have seen in the first round trip example is most likely not how it happens in real world applications, or at least it wouldn't make sense to implement it in this way if the application targets high numbers of frames per second. What the application in its render loop will rather do is, it will acquire the next image from the swap chain right after it has handed back image 2 for presentation. So the render loop immediately continues with a call to acquire next swap chain image. It gets another image from the swap chain because the swap chain had an image available. It is the image with index 1 again in this case. And at the same time, the swap chain starts presenting image 2, transferring its contents to the monitor. Now let us assume that the application was really fast in rendering into image 1 and already sends it back to the swap chain for presentation, while the contents of image 2 are still being transferred to the monitor. What can happen now is the following. Presentation of image 2 is still not done, but another image to be presented arrives, and it is swapped out during that ongoing transfer to the monitor. The transfer continues regardless, but now the presentation engine takes the data from image 1 and not longer from image 2. Presentation is done, but oh oh, the image on the monitor does not look very nice. The artifact that has occurred here is called tearing. Taking a closer look, 
we can see that the top part is displayed on the monitor that was taken from the previous image, image 2, and the bottom part was taken from the image with index 1 that arrived later in the presentation engine and immediately took the place of image 2. And that immediately was already a clue what is going on here. The swap chain behavior that we have observed happened because our swap chain here was configured to be running in the so-called presentation mode immediate. Using a swap chain running in this immediate presentation mode can lead to tearing artifacts as we have observed. As soon as we hand back an image for presentation to the swap chain, it immediately takes the place of the data source for transferring image data to the monitor. The immediate presentation mode is not the only one though. If we would like to avoid tearing, Vulkan swap chains luckily provide also different modes. We are going to take a look at the most important modes which are listed on this slide. We have already seen the immediate presentation mode in action and we will see how the FIFO mode, where FIFO means first in first out, works, how the FIFO relaxed mode differs from the FIFO mode, and we will also get to know the mailbox presentation mode. But first of all, we need to introduce an important concept. Let us focus on this monitor here, which has a vertical update frequency of 60 Hz. What that implies is that a complete update of the displayed image must take less than 16.6 milliseconds under all circumstances. In reality, it might well be that the image update can be performed faster, but this is the strict upper bound, otherwise the monitor cannot reach 60 Hz. Now the important aspect we need to introduce is the point in time when that blue scan line returns back to the top, which shall indicate that the currently bound image that shall be presented is started being read from its beginning. We call this event when the line is returning to the top the vertical blank. The vertical blank had a physical meaning with ancient display technology, but on modern LCD screens that is not really the case. In terms of graphics programming, it just indicates a point in time where it is safe to swap out the image that is being transferred to the monitor because data transfer has reached the end of the currently bound image and returns back to the start for reading image data again. A common term you'll encounter in the specification is the vertical blanking period which refers to the whole period between two of these theoretical vertical blanks. So from the first vertical blank all the way to the next vertical blank is the vertical blanking period. Between the end of one vertical blanking period and the beginning of the next vertical blanking period, the theoretical scanline returns back to the top and continues reading the image to be presented from the beginning. So on our 60 Hz monitor here, we get 60 of such vertical blanks every second. That means, if we strive to avoid tearing artifacts, we can swap the image to be presented 60 times per second, but not more often than that. If we upgrade to a 144 Hz monitor, we can swap the image 144 times per second and, naturally, such a monitor can be expected to be able to update the image faster, because it has less time available for this task. Let us upgrade our monitor once again to a monitor which supports adaptive sync. This could be one of these monitors which have been promoted by NVIDIA as G-Sync monitors and by AMD as FreeSync monitors. The general term for the functionality is adaptive sync and it means that the time interval between vertical blanks is not fixed but adaptive. Our monitor here states that an adaptive update range between 30 Hz and 144 Hz is supported, but it also means that in terms of image transfer speed it must be able to satisfy the same speed requirements than our previous 144 Hz monitor with fixed update rate. The animation here shall emphasize the point that the time intervals between vertical blanks can vary between 30 Hz and 144 Hz. But also in this case, the point is that the image to be transferred to the monitor may only be swapped during these vertical blanks if tearing shall be avoided. Let us return our focus back on the different presentation modes with respect to vertical blanks. We have already seen that the immediate mode does not care about vertical blanks, that means it does not wait for them, but just swaps the image to be presented right away. 
FIFO and mailbox presentation modes always wait on the next vertical blank before swapping images. And the FIFO relaxed mode also waits for vertical blanks unless a frame is running late. That means, if already some vertical blanks have occurred without a new frame arriving, it does not wait for the next vertical blank. We will see this behavior in an example later, but let's go through them one by one. So let's return to the immediate mode once again and let us assume that in our example the application is currently sending another image to the swap chain for presentation while a different image is currently being presented. And please note that there is now an additional section within the swap chain region which is titled to be presented. This shall indicate some mechanism which receives images which shall be presented but must wait for the next vertical blank before they can be presented. You can imagine this as a queue for example. With the immediate presentation mode, however, the swap chain does not utilize such a to be presented queue at all. But it just sends the incoming image straight to the presented image area, which serves as the data source for the image transfer to the monitor, swapping out the previously bound image and sending that back to the bucket of available images. Data is read from the new image and we get visual tearing and at some point the visual blank occurs but the swap chain doesn't care at the exact point in time when it occurs with the immediate presentation mode. Let's see what the specification has to say about the immediate presentation mode. VK present mode immediate KHR specifies that the presentation engine does not wait for a vertical blanking period to update the current image, meaning this mode may result in visible tearing. No internal queuing of presentation requests is needed as the requests are applied immediately. Let us move on to the FIFO presentation mode. We are in a similar situation as before, where one image is currently being presented within the swap chain and another image is handed over for presentation by the application. In this case, the image goes in the, into the queue and waits until the next vertical blank occurs. Image 1 has been completely transferred to the monitor, then the vertical blank occurs. and the next image from the queue is put into the place of the presented image and data is read right from its beginning, avoiding visual tearing. Let us add a few more images to our swap chain, which we can do by requesting more images during swap chain creation. This has the potential to increase the number of images that our application renders into in parallel, therefore increasing the frames per second. And let us assume that our application is really fast in drawing. So it acquires the next image, renders into it and sends it for presentation to the swap chain, while image 2 is currently being presented within the swap chain. We acquire yet another image, render into it really quickly and hand it over to the swap chain again for presentation. Now we have already two images queued, while presenting image 2 has still not been completed. Also meaning that no vertical blank has occurred yet. So our application is running ahead in this case with respect to the swap chain which is configured in FIFO presentation mode. The application of course does not stop there and acquires yet another image from the swap chain, but I'll pause the application's actions for a moment so that we can focus on the swap chain. At some point, the data transfer of image 2 has completed, a vertical blank occurs and image 2 is returned to the bucket of available images and the next image from the queue is activated as the source for the next data transfer to the monitor. Then image 3 is being transferred to the monitor during the time interval between two vertical blanks. The vertical blank occurs and the next image from the queue is activated as data source. The situation described here is not optimal as well, because if too many images queue up, the user of our application must be expected not to have a smooth experience. While we successfully avoided tearing artifacts, we now have the problem that our application might feel a bit unresponsive or lagging behind. 
Let us see how the specification describes the FIFO presentation mode before moving on to a different situation. VK present mode FIFO KHR specifies that the presentation engine waits for the next vertical blanking period to update the current image. Tearing cannot be observed. An internal queue is used to hold pending presentation requests. New requests are appended to the end of the queue and one request is removed from the beginning of the queue and processed during each vertical blanking period in which the queue is non-empty. This is the only value of present mode that is required to be supported. We have seen an example where the application was running ahead. Let us now see what happens if the application is lagging behind. We start the situation where the application has acquired an image from the swap chain. It starts drawing, but these draw calls are really slow. A vertical blank is happening in the meantime. The application is still busy rendering the image, while another vertical blank occurs. The application is still not done in the drawing stage, when yet another vertical blank occurs. Finally, the image can be handed over for presentation, but just before the swap chain can take over, another vertical blank occurs. And what happens now is that the image must still wait in the queue until the next vertical blank occurs, because with the FIFO presentation mode, it is not allowed to update the image to be presented outside of that vertical blanks. So, the vertical blank is here and the image can move into the presented image slot. Finally, the image can be presented, but that waiting on the next vertical blank has added additional delay. This particular situation is something that is addressed by the FIFO relaxed presentation mode. So let us return to a previous state of this example, but we have the swap chain configured to be in FIFO relaxed presentation mode instead of FIFO. The application renders really slowly and vertical blanks occur without a new image being handed over for presentation. The image is sent to presentation just before the swap chain can take over, yet another vertical blank occurs without a new image being swapped into the presentation slot. But as the swap chain receives the next image and it has recognized that several vertical blanks have occurred without a new image having arrived into the to be presented queue, the incoming image can go directly into the presentation slot without putting the image in the queue and without waiting for the next vertical blank, even if data transfer starts somewhere in the middle of the image in such a situation. Let us see how the specification describes this presentation mode. VK present mode FIFO relaxed KHR specifies that the presentation engine generally waits for the next vertical blanking period to update the current image. If a vertical blanking period has already passed since the last update of the current image, then the presentation engine does not wait for another vertical blanking period for the update, meaning this mode may result in visible tearing in this case. This mode is useful for reducing visual stutter with an application that will mostly present a new image before the next vertical blanking period, but may occasionally be late and present a new image just after the next vertical blanking period. And now let us move on to the final presentation mode that we are going to discuss in this lecture, which is the mailbox mode. In mailbox mode, the to be presented queue turns into a mailbox, into a very small mailbox that is. And this very small mailbox has only space for one single image. So the state of the example shown on this slide is that the application sends an image to the swap chain for a presentation, where the swap chain is currently presenting a different image. The application continues to acquire another image from the swap chain and starts rendering into it. Also in this example, our application is really fast and submits yet another image for presentation, while the currently presented image is not even fully transferred to the monitor yet. What happens now is the following. Image 3 takes the spot in the mailbox, which was previously occupied by image 2. Remember, there is only space for one single image in the mailbox. Our really fast uh, application acquires yet another image, renders into it really quickly, sends it to the swap chain for presentation again really quickly. 
where image 4 now takes the only spot in the mailbox. I'll again pause the actions in the application so that we can focus on the swap chain and what happens there is the following. After the currently presented image has been fully transferred to the monitor, at the next vertical blank, the image that is currently in the mailbox is activated as the next presentation source image. Well, this is a nice presentation mode that avoids both tearing artifacts and the lags that we have seen with the FIFO mode, it must be stated that we have rendered two images that we haven't even used in this example. This is a situation which you will mostly like want to avoid, um, especially on low power devices such as mobile phones in order to avoid producing heat or draining the battery too quickly. One way to avoid it might be to use fewer images in the swap chain or to install some additional synchronization mechanisms. To finish our discussion about presentation modes, let us see how the specification describes the mailbox mode. VK present mode mailbox KHR specifies that the presentation engine waits for the next vertical blanking period to update the current image. Tearing cannot be observed. An internal single entry queue is used to hold pending presentation requests. If the queue is full when a new presentation request is received, the new request replaces the existing entry and any images associated with the prior entry become available for reuse by the application. One request is removed from the queue and processed during each vertical blanking period in which the queue is non-empty. And now we are moving on to the extensions that need to be activated in order to make swap chains usable in Vulkan. First of all, we need the VKKHR swap chain extension, which is a device level extension. That extension alone, however, is only half the battle, since it requires the VKKHR surface extension to be enabled as well, which is an instance level extension. And we remember from the first episode in this lecture series that instance level extensions deal with non-device specific matters, but instead with matters that concern the Vulkan installation on a particular PC or operating system related elements, which is most definitely the case here where we need some connection to the operating system in order to get our rendered images sent to a monitor. What you do not have to take care of as developer is to access the concrete device which your monitor is connected to in order to get the images presented there. That is handled by the extensions. You just have to send the images which you would like to be presented to a queue which has presentation support. So if you have two GPUs in your system and you are using GPU1 where the monitor is connected, you just send the images to the uh, to be presented to a queue of GPU1. And if your application is rendering on GPU2, you just do exactly the same thing, just that you are using a queue of GPU2. But you do not have to take care about the fact that the data must be sent through GPU1 explicitly. That is handled by the extensions. So, as long as you can find a queue on a particular device which offers presentation support to a given surface, you are fine and you can just hand over the images to be presented to that queue. As a last chapter in this episode, let's take a look at the relevant code for the most important steps. Before we enter our render loop, we have to create a swap chain. Here are the most important parts of swap chain creation configuration. As mentioned before, this is tightly linked to a specific surface, which is represented through a VK surface KHR handle here. You can get such a surface handle through libraries like GLFW, or there are also several examples describing it, which you can find if you search for Windows System Integration or WSI in short. The surface handle is set in the config struct instance, which is of type VK swap chain create info KHR, where the KHR suffix indicates that it is an extension. In this example, we are requesting a swap chain that provides four images. They shall be of the format specified here, where this must be a valid surface format. 
the resolution and also the layers of the swap chain images can be configured. And also usage flags of the image can be set. In this case, VK image usage color attachment bit is specified, which indicates that these swap chain images shall be rendered into directly through a graphics pipeline. There are also other possibilities here. For example, an application could render into a different set of images and just copy or blit the rendered images into the swap chain images. In such a case, the color attachment usage would not be required, but instead one would have to specify the VK image usage transfer destination bit. The image could also be written directly from compute shaders. In this case, the VK image usage storage bit would be appropriate here. And finally, we set the particular presentation mode, which dictates the overall behavior of this swap chain as we have seen during several examples in this episode. There, the immediate presentation mode is configured. A call to vkCreateSwapChainKHR creates the swap chain and returns a valid handle through an output parameter if everything succeeded. The handle is highlighted here on the slide and, if successful, the swap chain images have been created internally. So what we must do to get access to them is to retrieve their handles. This can be achieved through the function vkGetSwapChainImagesKHR, where the first invocation returns the number of images that were actually created. We have requested four, but theoretically a different number could be returned here. And the second call to vkGetSwapChainImages writes the handles of the created swapchain images into an array, which we provide to the function. Moving into the render loop, the function to acquire the next available swap chain image is called vkAcquireNextImageKHR. It takes a timeout parameter, which tells the function how long it shall wait for images to become available if there are none available right now. uint64max means that the function potentially waits forever. The parameter highlighted on the slide here is a semaphore, which is a synchronization primitive. We haven't talked about synchronization primitives in this lecture series yet, but for now, it is just important to understand that a semaphore signals as soon as an operation has completed and a different operation might want to wait on that semaphore signal before it starts execution. So, in this concrete piece of code, VK acquire next image KHR signals the given semaphore and some other piece of work, for example a draw call, must wait until that signal occurs. The fence is conceptually very similar to the semaphore in so far as also the fence receives a signal and some other workload must wait for that signal to arrive before execution can continue. The difference between semaphore and fence is basically that a GPU workload such as draw calls wait on a semaphore and in contrast a fence is weighted on on the CPU side. That means we could wait just right there in our render loop after the acquire next image call on the fence signal. The nice property of the VK acquire next image KHR function is that it supports both approaches. The last parameter is an output parameter writing out the index of the swap chain image that is going to become available as soon as semaphore or fence are signaled. And this index just refers to the swap chain image handles, which we retrieved using vkget swap chain images KHR. Moving on to the draw stage, representing whichever rendering workload our application might perform, that rendering workload is submitted to a queue every frame. A VK submit info instance can be used to describe the workload. And the actual workload is contained in command buffers. The link to the previously described semaphore used with VK acquire next image KHR is established with the wait semaphore members. And the different semaphore can be specified, which shall be signaled as soon as this work package, represented by the referenced command buffers, has completed. The point here is that when this has completed, the rendered image can be handed back to the swap chain for presentation. 
VK queue submit submits the work packages and the semaphore setup to the given queue. And finally, VKQ submit also provides support for a fence, which can be used to synchronize the GPU with the CPU. Speaking of CPU GPU or host and device synchronization, let's take a look at what can happen if they are not nicely playing together. Actually, we have already seen such examples previously when we were talking about presentation modes where the CPU was running ahead or lagging behind. Let's take a look at another example from a slightly different perspective. It can often be the case that multiple frames are processed in parallel from processing the input to drawing to presenting the rendered image on the screen. At some point during the render loop of one frame, the input is being processed and it might be that the input of frame number two is processed before the first frame is presented to the screen. And the input of frame number 3 is processed before the second frame is presented on the screen. And so on. This can lead to more frames per second, because the parallelism of the application is maximized, but it can also lead to higher input latency, because the user always reacts to a frame that has been rendered in the past, maybe too many milliseconds ago, so that it would still feel nicely responsive. Using fences, the timing can be controlled and CPU and GPU work can be aligned better according to an application's requirements. This can lead to fewer frames per second, but also to reduced input latency. In this example here, every frame is presented before the input of the following frame is processed. And such a behavior was deemed to be desirable by many games in recent years. In 2019, both AMD and NVIDIA introduced some driver settings for reducing the input latency. The interesting thing here is that these only work with higher level APIs such as OpenGL, but not with low level APIs such as Vulkan, because in Vulkan, as you have seen in the code examples already, everything, every timing is precisely controlled by the programmer. So, Back to our code example, where we saw that we can sync the host with the device through fences. And we also saw the render finished semaphore, which signals when this work package here has completed. We keep the render finished semaphore in mind as we move on to the present call in our render loop. Presentation configuration is, again, set through a suitable config struct instance and the semaphore that was signaled during draw is here set to be waited on. That means, as soon as the signal arrives, the referenced swap chain image is good to go in terms of being presented. The image is referenced here. And the call to VKQ present KHR submits these instructions. As a last item in this episode, let's see how all of this could look like in a real-world situation, assuming that we do not use any fans between acquire next image and present to synchronize the CPU with the GPU between these two functions. We start by submitting the instructions for acquiring the next image. Furthermore, we submit the instructions that rendering shall start as soon as the image has been acquired. And we submit the instructions that the image shall be presented as soon as rendering has completed. So it could very well be that all of this was processed and submitted really, really fast on the CPU side. So for our illustration here, this would mean that image 1 is somewhere in flight to the swap chain already. And at some point, the GPU starts to execute all the work that we have already submitted. As soon as the render finished semaphore has signaled, the swap chain knows that this image can now be presented. And the swap chain will wait on the next vertical blank or not, depending on the configured presentation mode. And then it will set the image as source of the data to be transferred to the monitor. 
the monitor updates in a vertical manner and we get to see the image on the screen. That's it for the second episode of this Vulkan lecture series. Thank you for your attention.